Welcome back to Smart Life. Just a reminder, you can watch us live in cities all around the country on Biz TV, growing all the time. Now on the air in New York, Philadelphia, and Orlando. Biz TV, it's your biz. And of course, you can view past episodes of Smart Life at moneybizlife.com. And now the cheeky scientist Isaiah Henkel joins us from somewhere in the world. He's on an adventure across Europe looking to exact revenge on everyone who's ever wronged him. Dr. Henkel, where are you taking revenge today? Munich. Munich. It sounds bad, but. <laughs> very yeah. good, very good. Lots of revenge to be taken there, I'm sure. Um, uh, do tell <laughs> us, um, tell us your, your initial thoughts on the topic of revenge and, and, and a little bit about your experience with it as you wrote, of course, on your blog. Yeah, so I started thinking, like, why does it feel so good to think about revenge, but when you actually exact revenge, you often feel guilty or bad, you know, so is it better to just keep thinking about it or is it better to actually get revenge? And what really got me thinking about it was I went through a period of my life in graduate school where I had someone who kind of had the keys to my future and, and wouldn't unlock the door for me. And it made me start having these fantasies of how I could get back at him or like what, what I could do if I finally got, you know, what I wanted. I finally got my degree one day I'll get back at him, and it's, uh, it's something that really drove me to get out of graduate school, and that's what got me on this line of thinking. So did you, so did you get back at him? I guess that's the best question. <laughs> that is a good question, and uh, in, in the sense that I think you're asking it as far as did, did I do anything specifically to exact revenge? Did I, you know, send him a, a really nasty email or, you know, play some sort of prank on him or egg his house? No, I never did anything like that, um, but in a sense, I have used it to to drive me, you know, forward and to 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 make my life, uh, you know, better in a way. And I, I think, you know, as the old saying goes, that that is the best revenge. You say that uh, some of the best ways to seek revenge that you that you can seek revenge, but it doesn't always look like what we think of in terms of an eye for an eye, for example. That sometimes um, the best revenge is actually just uh, doing things like uh, using that energy to motivate you to work harder and excel more. Exactly. And study after study shows that the, the best part of revenge is wanting it, but not getting it. So people who want it and use that and channel it into working harder and, and bettering their lives are, are better off because of it. But people that actually get revenge in the petty ways are always worse off. They feel guilty and they actually make their lives worse. And so some of the ways that you can get revenge without sabotaging your life include uh, one of the things I wrote was speaking through your work. So instead of, you know, a lot of people fantasize about telling off their boss or going up to somebody's face or sending that nasty email. Instead of doing that, write through your work. If you're going through something that's tough, use it as a teaching point to help someone else that might be going through the same thing, as an example. Mm -hmm. and, and invariably, I mean, everyone goes through um, you know, it's just the, sort of the human condition, as I said in my monologue. It, it, everyone goes through this to some degree that should I, shouldn't I, you know, and depending uh, on the answer to that, I guess, I guess my biggest question is how do you know if it really is time to seek revenge? Because there is a certain appropriate time where straight up revenge um, in the classic sense might be necessary. What are those times? Right, so I, I think if, if somebody, you know, in business is a good example. If somebody comes after you or undercuts you or, or, or does something that might not be morally correct, you should call them out on that. And you can't just let people walk all over you. I mean, you can't let a bad people flourish in that sense. You have to take a stand at some point. And I just think that there are better ways to take a stand than, you know, arguing or whatever. Like if you, you can be as productive as possible in that sense, and that's what I mean by, by speaking through your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do think that that is, uh, that is so critical. And a lot of people, you know, I, I had a situation rise just the other day, and I was saying to one of my people, I said, you know, the, the, the sick thing about me is that when things like this happen, I know that I can use that fuel as energy for the yeah. next week. It's really funny how I can, you know, and I guess I think most people do that, but for people who don't realize they do that, um, the act of revenge can be, a, 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 it, it can completely 
uh, squelch the creative energy that can come from the anger of the injustice to begin with. And I think that's what people need to realize, right? No, exactly. And I mean, you bring up a good point. I mean, a lot of people, they, they don't understand that they're actually getting revenge by it because they're going about it in an indirect way, but that's how you want to go about it. Uh, people get in trouble when they try to get direct revenge, like they try to throw down and challenge somebody face to face or, or have that big explosive argument and, and win. That's what they fantasize about. But in reality, going indirect, whether it's through your work or, you know, if you have someone that's bringing you down directly or a boss that's right above you, you can go direct by, go, you can go indirect by going above them to their boss. Because a lot of times you want to get revenge on people that are kind of renting space in your head and hijacking your focus. Yeah. So instead of trying to get back at them directly, maybe what is something that's going to make them take their focus off of you and onto themselves? Like, again, if you go to your boss's boss or, or someone that, that might have more control over their focus than you do. Mm -hmm. And there are other ways besides just working hard that you mentioned. One of those is, you know, taking control of your of your physical shape, using that energy to get, you know, to get in shape or to um, to, to do a new diet or, or whatever. There are there are other ways too that can be really productive. You know, when you've been wronged and you want to take revenge, other than taking actual revenge. Tell us about those. Yes, uh, and you, I love the word that you use, productive, right? Because that's the goal. Yeah. And why when people get out of a bad relationship or, or, or whatever it might be, their, their first instinct is I'm going to go get in really good shape and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to show him or I'm going to show her. Uh, it's, it's instinctual because that is, that is the best revenge. Like making yourself better in, in these productive ways is much, much more healthy than you know, trying to sink down to somebody else's level. Yeah, that's exactly it. So I'm so curious. Ha have you had any contact with this person that you initially had this uh, hankering to <laughs> to seek revenge on? Have you had any more contact with that person? And do you know uh, what they know about your life? Or what did you ultimately decide to do? No, I mean, I, for me, it just became something that I used as a, as a teaching point because, I mean, especially in, the, you know, in graduate school and, and other people, I mean, through the academic system as it stands, a lot of people are faced with people that are supposed to be their mentors, but instead of helping them, a lot of times these people kind of try to take the wind out of their cells or try to push them down because maybe they didn't get what they wanted in life. And so I've kind of turned that into a personal mission for me that, you know, you're not the only person going through this. And if I can use it to teach somebody or help somebody, that's what I choose to do. But I haven't had any direct contact. And, you know, I'm sure it's not the last person that I'm going to face that that'll want to try to hold you back because those people are everywhere. You just have to make sure that you choose to be productive and to take the high road. And so what about, what exactly happens physically, I guess, I mean, you know, neurologically speaking, after someone seeks revenge that is so negative? Do you, do you understand that brain function there? Yeah, so, I mean, that's what the, that's what's so interesting about the studies are that when you desire revenge, it, it, it does activate specific parts of your brain, the same parts of your brain uh, that are active when you're anticipating pleasure, whether it be uh, sex or making money or, or eating really delicious food. So that's the same thing. But then once you actually have revenge, that part of your brain stops being active because <laughs> you no longer have the pleasure to look forward to. Kind of like after um, you go so ahead and eat the pizza, the whole yes, pizza, and then exactly. you're thinking, well, that wasn't, yeah, it wasn't really, this isn't what I was going for, this feeling, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And so well, what's your best advice to people who are trying to decide, you know, do I, do I just go confront that person or do I just integrate this into my own personal motivation? Because sometimes the confrontation is necessary or sometimes the exposing, I mean, just exposing someone for what they really are becomes necessary because they're too repetitive in their bullying. Absolutely. And you bring up a, two good thing, two good points there. The first one is that, you know, it's not a one size fits all model. Sometimes you have to call out people. And I think if they're really being abusive uh, or causing harm to other people or doing something that's really just morally egregious, for sure, you need to call them out. You need to put a stop to it. You need to uh, rally people or go to whoever you need to go to. Um, but if it's if it's one of those situations where you want something, and, and this is the situation that I was in, like I was in graduate school by choice. I wanted my PhD, and this is one of those things I had to go through. 
Um, so it wasn't a call out situation, but, but instead, you know, speaking through your work or, or letting it drive me, or in some cases, like I said on there, creating a fog or creating a void and, and doing, doing the opposite of what I was used to doing it was my way uh, of getting out of the situation. So I think it's important for you to take a step back, figure out what's best for your specific situation, and then take some decisive action. All right, check it out. 10 Ways Intelligent People Get Revenge from IsaiahHankel.com. Isaiah Hankel, tr safe travels, and thank you for being with us today. Thanks, Dr. Gina. All right.